everybody welcome back uh, this time I had a request for setting up uh, just a pump from the nether <clears throat> to the overworld and I have a couple different ways I want to show you uh, to cover the different basics so let's uh, get into it uh, the very first thing I want to cover is when you're transporting lava before you're ready to do a setup of some sort let me cover uh, what I like to do uh, obviously you can haul it by the bucket right uh, but even from underground uh, if you have a lava source, uh, I like to set up uh, the personal tanks if you happen to have that. That's in thermal craft. Um, and to make a, a portable tank, you're just going to need an induction smelter and a pulverizer because you're going to need the uh, obsidian to pulverize. Uh, because if we look at the personal tanks here, uh, it's hardened glass and tin. And the hardened glass is uh, the induction smelter, the pulverized obsidian, and the lead ingots. Uh, to pulverize your obsidian obviously you need the pulverizer and all you do is you just take your bucket and you just right click it in there and what's great about the portable is you can pick it up carry it around and when you put it down it's still there uh, and when you want to uh, add it to your uh, your lava line uh, boom it's right there click it so it turns orange and it dumps out okay so let me pick this up just uh, to avoid confusion here uh, all right, so the uh, the next thing I wanted to cover is two a couple different ways to uh, import uh, directly from uh, the Nether itself. Uh, the first one is using a liquid tesseract, and the other one is using a Ender storage. Uh, I like the Ender. It's not Ender storage. I'm sorry, that's an Ender chest. This is an Ender tank. So what I like about the Ender tank is. Uh, first off, it's pretty easy to uh, to get into. If we take a look, you need a cauldron, wool, some blaze rods. Good luck with that. I like to go to the desert, get the uh, the blaze powder, uh, and then make them into the rods. Uh, obsidian, and then uh, the ender pearls. Quick side note, all these things are going to require a lot of enders. Uh, if you put a minium stone with four iron, don't forget... Uh, you will get uh, ender pearl uh, and in the minium stone itself is the shards of minium uh, around the inert stone which is the gold the iron and the uh, the stone but <clears throat> again if you use the uh, the four iron and the minium stone you'll get the ender pearls uh, they're good for making all this stuff um, I always have trouble getting straight enders but if you can get them that's great and they drop their eyes and you know there's a lot of eyeless ones running out there so uh, let's go to the uh, the nether here. Oh, and then we have a chunk loader. Uh, you can also use the uh, the anchors as well. I like the uh, the chicken bones uh, chunk loader, uh, and it's a little tricky to make here. It's got the uh, enchantment table with gold and an ender pearl, but they're definitely worth it, and they're adjustable in the size. Uh, there's a world anchor from uh, Railcraft that you actually have to feed it with uh, ender pearls. Um, I guess a little tedious. Uh, I like the chunk loader, although it's a little, little more up front. All right, so uh, here we are. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm in the Nether. Uh, the first thing I like to do is come out from the edge a little bit, because uh, the pumps will draw in a circle. Uh, it'll start drawing lava, and over time, uh, that's going to add up. Um, I just have some sort of an energy set up. Okay, in this case. I use a redstone energy cell to power my uh, pump. See how it goes. Uh, it goes into the liquid tesseract, which with the liquid tesseract is sent to, is currently configured for send only. The other side is receive. And I have the pipe so I can see my lava. I kind of like to do that. Same thing here with the, uh, the piping. It's not necessary either one. Uh, just again for the configuration. Here's my chunk loader. You'll notice I'm on peaceful. That's the other thing that can be tricky is getting lava from the nether is uh, the gas and stuff. Uh, when I build my platform out, I usually like to cover it, have kind of a tunnel coming out uh, so that I don't have to deal with the uh, the mobs or the bats trying to knock me off the edge, things of that nature. I wanted to show you this one instead of uh, using a, a energy cell or even making an energy tesseract. Uh, I threw some sterlings on here. Uh, again, anything you want to put out here to uh, power your pump requires Buildcraft power. Uh, in this case, again, we have our waterproof pipe. You can use the liquid ducts as well if you prefer those. 
And in this case, I have it going to, again, a uh, an Ender Tank. Uh, remember with the Ender Tanks, if you haven't used them, and I haven't really uh, very much, there's a little symbol on the front, and if you right-click it, uh, it spins this dial. Blue is uh, where it's going to uh, receive. Uh, you could pull from it, but you'd need a, uh, like a wooden uh, duct to pull from it in the blue mode with the blue on top. Uh, the other side, and uh, let's just run back. So we have our uh, our pumps, uh, some sort of power, uh, and some way to get it out of the nether, either a tesseract or, in this case, the uh, the ender tank. Um, let's come back over here. I made a little staircase just because I was running back and forth. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm, da -dum -dum. So what I was going to say is on the uh, ender tank, I have this one orange, so it'll pull out automatically uh, on orange. Uh, again, if I had it blue, uh, I would have to have some kind of a, uh, a wood pipe to draw from and then switching to that. But on orange, uh, it's really the, uh, the out mode is what it's designed for by default. And it will send out without any kind of uh, wooden uh, pipe to pull out or anything of that nature. Um, so basically, blue is in your nether. Orange is on your receiving end. You're good to go. Um, now, the other thing I was going to point out before I wrap this up. Uh, these are a couple different ways that you can pull. You're going to need a, a chunk loader or an anchor uh, on both sides. Unless you just have people hanging out uh, in both sides. <laughs> and you can, instead of going these two routes. Don't forget you can use your ender chest. And uh, maybe use red power to... Um, uh, you know, fill buckets and transfer the buckets or cells. Uh, cells, of course, are going to, uh, you know, require a little tin to get into. Uh, but, you know, once you drain them, you can, uh, you know, send them back through the loop. Uh, that sort of thing. But these are the uh, the two quickest ways. Again, I always like to start off with a couple tanks. Uh, just fill them by hand, even before I've gone to the nether. Uh, this will hold eight buckets. I've got one in there, so I don't know if I have enough here to fill the full thing. It's four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if I take this ninth bucket, you'll notice uh, it won't it you know won't go in. Uh, obviously if I put another one down it will. Uh, so they'll they'll hold eight buckets, uh, which is again nice to uh, to transport them around. Uh, you just have to have the one bucket uh, to load. Liquid tesseracts take a little more to get into. You got a few more machines you have to make. Uh, you have to make a, a magma crucible uh, to make the uh, the liquid tesseract. Uh, again, just a quick review. Don't know if I covered all of the details on it. This one's a little tougher. You have to have the uh, pneumatic servo, which is just, you know, iron and redstone and some glass. Okay. Uh, and you're going to need a uh, the frame, which is one diamond, the hardened glass, and the tin. Okay. And then take the frame, and you're going to have to put it into a liquid transposer that has some molted ender in it. Uh, and it takes um, a thousand uh, of the, uh, which is four ender eyes, uh, to fill this, to make the unattuned. And to get the liquid molten ender, that's where you're going to need this magma crucible. You have the magma crucible next to a liquid transposer. You have this sending over to the liquid transposer. Put your ender eyes in here. Have your receiving of the uh, the molten ender here. And then put your uh, your frame in there and it'll fill it up. Uh, and then with the frame itself, sorry, with the frame itself, you plop it in the middle of the, uh, the recipe. You have some silver, some tin, some copper, and then that servo and boom, there's a liquid tesseract. So a lot more to get into here than it was uh, for the uh, the ender tank. Again, the ender tank was the cauldron, the wool, the blaze rods. So again, either trip the nether or again, I like to go to the deserts, get the uh, the blaze powder and make them into rods uh, and then the obsidian uh, from there. All right, guys, that's the uh, transporting liquid. I hope this helped. Uh, again, if you guys have any requests to see anything specific, let me know and uh, I will be happy to cover it. And uh, you guys, uh, you guys enjoy, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.